Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back uh, to a Wood Brass and Glue Online GX V6, and we're continuing on with the Scottish May build. Uh, if we do grab our plans, as you can see here, what we're going to have a look at is panels, uh, actually just panel 12 at the moment, and uh, I believe we're having a quick look at panel 15 as well. 13 will, panel 13 will come very soon, but we're just going to do a few slight things. It's actually very wet weather in Perth at the moment. We have a bloody great storm coming over. Don't be surprised if you hear thunder. Not much we can do about that. So the first thing we're going to deal with, though, is that annoying piece down the back where we have absolutely no plans for just a couple of pitches. And I actually do think I've got this one worked out, so bear with me here. So... What the plans are calling for is piece 61 and 62, 62 being this piece right here. This is 0 0.6 by 5 millimeter um, planking. This is the stuff that you would have done the inner planking with, okay? So down on the transom uh, and along the ball wall, uh, and same again on the deck. So. It's very thin, flimsy stuff. Uh, having a look at it and knowing what it's supposed to be, uh, I actually think this is the wrong stuff. One of the other things you're gonna need is a two by two, which I'm holding in my hand at the moment, uh, which is basically just a, a piece of the rubbing strake that you've already put onto the, uh, onto the ship. Um, you just need a, a length. Now, the plans do call for these to be 58 millimeters long, or 5.8 centimeters. Um, You'll notice I haven't cut the rubbing strake and I don't intend to cut the rubbing strake until I've actually put all this uh, actually together and that's for a very good reason. So we need one of those. What I have gone and done is I've grabbed a piece, a uh, spare piece of the inner planking uh, from the hull. So the first layer of planking that we put down um, this is quite a size thicker. I'm just wondering, did I actually read this right? No, that's right, that's, this is 1.5. So this is 0 0.6, this is 1.5. Having a look at what this thing is supposed to do, I actually think it's supposed to be the 1.5, not the 0 0.6. So I'm gonna do this relatively quickly. Um, basically, you need two parts of this. I'll just cut that and that can go into the pile. I'll put that aside. I, need, I might need that later so I'm not going to throw it out. Okay, so you've got two parts. Glue both of these together and let them dry. Simple, simple, simple. Come back to it after it's all dried and we want, what did I say, 58? Basically all I did was I measured across the back of the transom, okay? Um, and it's roughly going to be about that. What is 58 anyway? Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so that's actually 58. Or 5.8 centimetres. Did I cut this to the right side? So all I've done is measured out the 5.8 Marked out the 5.8 on the wood, such as that. Had a look at the plans and saw yeah, roughly what it looks like. It's like, yeah, okay. So it looks like it has actually used both pieces of wood here. And then, surprisingly enough, went and got the lid off my lolly jar. Put it on the two marks. And marked it out. That's it. So I'll put those aside and I'll whack that back aside because um, here's the one I've done earlier. So once I've marked it, I've cut it. I've then actually come back and realised that the transom, of course, is curved so 
made a, a quick template up for the curvature, put the template down. It's not much of a curve, just keep that in mind. Uh, marked it on the inside and then cut it. Gave both sides a nice sand, gave the edges a nice sand, and that is now the transom rubbing streak. Well, that's the embellishment for the rubbing streak. So rubbing streak's still there. And then eventually that will actually sit on there like that. I say eventually. <laughs> just bear with me here. This is coming. So I've still got to do a little bit of shaping, as you can see, just to get that to sit flat. I mean, I could have it down at an angle. That is a possibility. And uh, looking at the picture, it actually does look like it's down at an angle. So I might just leave it and put it in an angle on the back. If you're wondering what this is actually for, um, right about here is where your uh, the rudder uh, king post will be. The king post being the round bit that goes through the hole and pokes out the top. The whole point of this piece is to stop the ship's boat when it's down the stern, smashing against the king post and doing damage to your rudder. That's the whole point of this thing. Um, I have had a look at some pictures, uh, not necessarily of this ship, because I haven't actually found any real good photos of this ship. Um, some of them have uh, cleats down on this piece, some of them have eye bolts, uh, just so you, that you can uh, tie off uh, the ship's uh, boat to the stern, or you can put a painter line, run a painter line down the side of the ship and then uh, haul the boat uh, backwards and forwards as you require. So, for this piece, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go steam it. I'll probably soak it in water first, then steam it. Um, and then the intention will be to take this, put this piece on here with a rubber band, uh, and then bend it around this. Noting that this is the curvature of this. So, once I've matched that to that, I can then glue the two pieces together. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that pain in the ass piece from down the back end. So, by the end of the video, we'll have that constructed. Next part that we're going to looking at is the rudder. Da -da. Now, I'm not too sure how each kit's going to be. I'm assuming that the kit's going to be the same, and then you've got a rudder that looks like this. Uh, and if you have a look at your plans, um, the rudder actually cuts off there. And that piece there is... Um, a I think it's four mil dowel that they've used here. Now, I have actually measured this. That is the full length of the rudder anyway. So you can, theoretically, sand this round nicely and then stick it up the, uh, stick it through the hole and have the top pop, pop out. However, I am actually going to cut this off and uh, use dowel and construct that. And this is the part that we're going to get to. Now, I did actually mention, before I go away, do all that, and then come back, if you have a look on picture 14, you can see that there are uh, side pieces that also need to be made up. I'm going to make those up as well. Now, when you make these up, if I can find the picture, actually use... Oh, it's, yeah, they're not they're actually going to show it, but if you go to picture 26, you will see that there are four sets. One on the outside, one on the in, inboard side. The one on the inboard side is the pin rail. Now, these are all the same size. Uh, they're made out of the same stuff. So I'm actually going to cut all eight, shape them, clean them up, um, and much with the rudder and... Uh, the rubbing stri uh, the rear rubbing strike is uh, get it varnished up and get it prepared to actually go on the model uh, because that other than a few other um, uh, blocks and tackle uh, and some pins are pretty much it for the hole so and if you haven't actually noticed um, I've already varnished my hole I finally got a varnish. It looks great. So I'm going to head off. I'm going to work on these uh, and I'll bring you all back 
uh, when these are done. And um, I'll walk, walk you all through uh, how I'm actually going to put the rudder on. Okay? So, catch you all soon. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So, after. Oh, we damn. Yeah, knocking things here. So, <laughs> after a uh, quite a little bit of work, if I put up into the camera, and why do I not? Hang on. <clears throat> Alright, there we go. That should be a little bit better. You can now see the rudder. Sorry about that. I, I actually had the light turned off. So I've now actually shaped up the rudder. I've fitted the rudder. Now you'll notice I haven't put the king post on. Uh, and the reason is if you put the king post on, put the, push the rudder up, um, then you've got to actually pull the rudder back down onto the uh, your actual um, brass parts and that's a pain in the butt so the easiest way I have found over the years is to put the top brass parts on um, onto the rudder rudder first uh, push your uh, wire uh, you will have copper uh, copper tubing copper wire something along those lines that goes in there you put those in and then you feed the ship's uh, section in to make uh, uh, the rudder section up. Now I haven't actually varnished this just yet and we still have one piece left to go but before I put the last piece in if I turn it over um, there you go that's the embellishment with the Right there now I have actually angled mine down um, you may not like that uh, it, it's going to be up to you I'm not overly sure how this is actually supposed to be photos on the internet show various different angles various different positions uh, I've just gone for well a basic setup it does actually work and that should be your waterline I think about here so if I run my finger down like that to the waterline that is where the waterline is so maybe it should have come up a little bit more of an angle eh, not too sure but we do have one last part to go and that's this this is the king post Okay, um, you'll, if I, I'm not too sure if I can get this. Um, in here, there is a four millimeter hole that I've drilled through. It does actually go all the way through. And if I put the king post through, as you can see, king post through. All right, king post. It's the small little piece. It's three mil, not four mil. Uh, I was wrong on that one. It's actually a three mil uh, king post. What I did was drilled a very small hole in the top and I put a very small piece of copper um, at the top of it. Very small hole at the top of the rudder. And what that allows now is me to match the king post uh, to the rudder. And I just need to get it into position and I will glue that up and get that fitted. And that is essentially the majority of the hole done. Now, as I said before, we do have the other bits and pieces that need to be done, um, such as uh, these. Uh, this is the... God, my mind just went blank then. <laughs> Ah, the pin rails, sorry. <laughs> I knew what I was thinking. Okay, so the pin rails eventually will come up and onto here. I do need to shape to size. Um, one set of pin rails have five uh, belaying pins in. 
The other set have seven. And if I remember correctly, because I'm not actually looking at it. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so the set that has five, strangely enough, is at the front. The set that has seven is at the stern. So that will be, you know, roughly here. I don't have the thing at the moment. Uh, and I've cut the extra parts. These are the outboard parts. So if I put my model on the stand for the moment. So what you will end up with is belaying pins on one side and these on the other side. And these ones here are the ones where your uh, dead eyes are actually going to come up on. So the dead eye stays will actually rest upon these to give it stability. And when I actually get to that point, which isn't too far away, um, I'll show you how to do that. Well, maybe not how to do it, but show you what it should roughly look like. Uh, be careful with that because the dead eye stays are slightly different. The aft one, although that takes uh, seven belaying pins, only has four dead eyes. The Ford ones, which have five belaying pins, have four dead eyes, but also has one block and tackle. So, yeah, something we're going to deal with. So, next episode, one, I'm actually going to get all this glued in and uh, varnished. I'm not going to do the varnishing now. As I said, it is stormy over here, and the varnish just is not going to dry in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to have to wait for a little bit of clear weather. Uh, I'll get that done. But next episode, what we'll do is we will get those bits and pieces on. I'll get them uh, varnished up and prepped. But next episode, we'll get those on. Uh, we will also get the steering mechanism uh, fitted and uh, check and make sure that it's all good to go. So that will be the next episode. So as per normal guys, if you like the video, do the thumbs up. Uh, YouTube will love you for it, seriously. If you're new to the channel, of course, press subscribe. If you want to keep up to date, uh, hit the notification bell uh, button and don't forget to press the bell. Okay? Bell's the important part. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, fair winds and following sense.